Well, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming, uh, either in person or virtually. Just a great to, uh, quote, see you, although I can't see anyone, which is really frustrating. But uh, I'm going to launch right in because they only gave me 50 minutes. I, I And, you know, when I started this, I thought, oh, you know, I no problem at all covering the, the high points in 50 minutes, but it's just tough. It's really tough. So I've had to necessarily skinny things down. I'll get into what later on. I would ask that you hold questions to the end because we're going to be going through this pretty quickly and I, I don't want to miss anything. Uh, at the end, I'm happy to answer any questions. And of course, afterward, if you think of questions, that's fine. It always happens to me as well. I think of things 10 minutes after I disconnect or walk away or whatever. Uh, by all means, please, let's continue the conversation. Okay, so so the topic, give Kotlin the boot. Uh, as you may know, Spring Boot supports, well, actually Groovy as well, but, but pr primarily Kotlin and Java. So uh, sometimes the, the question comes up, why should I use one or the other? And, and that's hopefully what this will answer today or, or maybe give you some more things to think about at least. Uh, my name is Mark Heckler. I am a principal cloud advocate of Java and JVM languages with Microsoft. Uh, if you want to reach me after the fact, by all means, please do so. I have a couple email addresses listed here, uh, but really the level best way to reach me pretty much any time, day or night, anywhere around the globe, is via Twitter. So check uh, check out uh, MK Heck on Twitter. Uh, if you already follow me, you probably know that I'm much more responsive on Twitter. If you don't follow me, why? Why do you not? <laughs> Kidding. Anyway, all right. So let's see if we can get this going. Uh, a bit about me. I am an architect and developer. Uh, my background is heavily in the Java ecosystem, the JVM ecosystem, as you might imagine. Uh, I am an advocate. No kidding. Uh, I am also an author, which I'll get into momentarily, uh, of several books, but there's one more recent one that I'm kind of proud of. Uh, I am a Java champion, Java One Rockstar, Groundbreaker Ambassador, Kotlin Developer, developer Expert. Uh, and, and up till, till the last couple of years, I still felt, you know, hey, I still had to get my own coffee. Who do I see about that? Now it's actually trained me really well. I'm getting my own coffee all the time, primarily working out of the house, and that's cool. So I'm, I'm well trained in this. I'm also a licensed pilot. Uh, so that's something that I do, quote, in my copious spare time. Uh, but I, I fly. Uh, so I, you know, when I can't fly commercial, which, you know, frankly, it's a lot more fun when you get up there and you're handling the oak yourself and you're you're flying at a lower altitude and seeing the world from a few thousand feet up. up. Uh, it's just kind of a different perspective and a lot of fun and a good mental challenge in a lot of different ways. Uh, the book. Uh, yeah, so I released this earlier this year, Spring Boot Up and Running. Uh, all the examples, save one, is in Kotlin and Java. Uh, the one is just kind of the foundational data feed uh, application, so I didn't feel terribly compelled to go ahead and, and um, provide that in both. But I, I get even with myself on that because today the data feed is provided by a Kotlin app, so it, it, it's all good. Uh, but if you're interested in finding out more, just follow the link. Check out uh, Spring Boot Book on Twitter. Of course, it's on Twitter too. Uh, and uh, if you're not, that's cool too. But uh, yeah, it's uh, I tried to make this something that would be something, uh, a book, a good reference for somebody coming into the Spring ecosystem new, as well as somebody who wanted to go back, revisit fundamentals, maybe expand your knowledge in a different way over different topics within the Spring ecosystem. So hope you like it. The plan for today, as I mentioned, we have very limited time. Uh, and uh, according to Leonard Bernstein, a famous uh, conductor and uh, composer, uh, with the New York Philharmonic for, for a number of years. Uh, he One of his favorite quotes, and I, I love to collect quotes from anybody and anywhere, and this is, I think, one of the most brilliant of all time. To achieve great things, two things are needed. A plan and not quite enough time, and we have that. So the plan for today is to cover uh, things a little bit, and again, I'm going to have to keep this pretty tight. Uh, so there is going to be a lot of material that I really would love to share. There's just no time, uh, but I'm happy to, to talk about this at length in any different direction. Uh, just ping me. So we're going to be talking a little bit about Kotlin vis-a-vis -vis Java, uh, and that's just the languages. That has nothing at this point, you know, the first point to do with Spring Boot necessarily or Spring, the Spring ecosystem, just language-wise. Then we'll talk about Spring Boot and kind of the options you have at your disposal, some pros and cons, some facts, some things that actually are definable, provable, and then opinions, which aren't provable, but just uh, kind of bear out based on my preferences and, and things that I do or have seen. Uh, your mileage may vary. And then of course, code. We're gonna go through those first three topics really quickly because I want to get to the code. I think that's where you see the truth, right? 
Uh, so some disclaimers. Well, there will be facts. Those will be referenceable because facts are not facts if they're not referenceable, really. Uh, there will be opinions. I guarantee you I'm going to share some opinions. You may. I also guarantee you probably will not agree with all of them, and that's fine. Uh, I, I would hope you would because, you know, my opinions are right. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> some will be right. Some will be wrong. Some will be right in certain circumstances, and I'll try to point that out. I'll also try to point out uh, very clearly what is fact, what is kind of opinion, right? So to start off with, uh, what is Kotlin's reason for being in the first place? Well, Kotlin claims to be modern, concise, and safe. And generally speaking, it is modern, concise, and safe. Um, so it, in short, what, what the designers and developers of Kotlin wanted to create is a better Java than Java. And generally, they did a great job, I think. Uh, there's little or no cruft, so it is modern. You know, there's nothing that's kind of dead on baggage that's been carried along for 20 versions, and I'm exaggerating a bit, but but it's a newer language, so there's not a lot of, of um, legacy, if you will, or technical debt that's been brought along just in the name of supporting very, very ancient applications. Uh, it's also concise. There's There are really no extra required words or ceremony. Uh, minimalism is not just for apartments and flats. And in terms of the language, uh, the Kotlin designers did a really great job in, in really analyzing every last keyword, every last uh, statement or construct uh, in order to make it, it as clean and efficient as possible. Not terse. There's a difference between terseness and conciseness. Terseness, you don't always have context. You don't always, it's not always clear. And it is, Kotlin is very concise without being terse. It's also safe. Uh, null safety is built into the language. Uh, you have to really try really try. You can, but you have to really try to shoot yourself in the foot. <laughs> so that's very, that's kind of huge, right? Because if you've been developing in Java for a long time, you, you sometimes realize how easy it is to do something bad to yourself in terms of your code. Uh, some wins. Well, it is a fresh and elegant language. Kotlin is. Uh, the concision is amazing. There are adoptions on several fronts, uh, server side, mobile. Uh, you, you have uh, even JavaScript heavy uh, places due to Kotlin JS. Uh, there is Kotlin native. And, and that's something else we could talk about in terms of Kotlin native versus Growl and so on and so forth. Again, no time today, but happy to carry on that discussion later. There is great interoperability with Java. So if you're doing a lot of Java work and you want to start uh, just start feeding in a little bit of Kotlin, you can. It's not an either or, which is amazing. It's it's a huge win, uh, especially if you have history with other JVM languages that aren't always so um, so so easy to work with in terms of, of interoperability with Java. Uh, there are some losses. Uh, it is a new language, and I say losses kind of loosely. Uh, it is a new language, so if you're well steeped in Java, uh, it is something you would have to learn, you know, some different syntax, some different rules. Uh, that said, it's pretty easy to pick up for Java developers, uh, but there is some additional effort to, to include or use Kotlin in your applications or in your, your system portfolio. Uh, sometimes company acceptance is not always there uh, because if a company is specifically or very rigorous in terms of what they allow in terms of their development environments, uh, you may have to go through a lot of hoops in order to get Kotlin approved, oddly enough, because it compiles to the same bytecode, but sometimes corporations, big public companies or, or uh, public institutions, this becomes an issue. Uh, there are some tooling limitations. Obviously, JetBrains is behind Kotlin. JetBrains is also behind IntelliJ. So as you might imagine, IntelliJ tooling is brilliant for Kotlin, um, somewhat less so when it comes out uh, to, to other tools outside of IntelliJ, although that is not not always the case, and it is definitely improving. Uh, there was a slower compiler for Kotlin. It actually, when you would, uh, I'll speak specifically in this one case to Spring Boot applications. When you would compile Kotlin Spring Boot applications, uh, it was it was much slower. It was a couple, sec you know, for a for a very small application. If it took, you know, 1.2 seconds to compile Java, it might take double that for Kotlin, which again is still pretty minimal, but it's it was significant. With the uh, the more recent updates to the compiler more recent compiler, you're talking uh, almost no difference at all. In fact, sometimes it's a little faster for the Kotlin compiler. So that is kind of a non-issue anymore. Why switch? Uh, well, you know, language, uh, the ease of switching, uh, there's a lack of downsides. Uh, when I say language, Kotlin is a very fluent and elegant language. It's very fun to work with, if you pardon the, the pun, which you'll I'll get into later. Um, there is a lack of downsides in terms of interoperability because it is so interoperable. Uh, so that's not necessarily a sticking point. So you could switch uh, if you're interested in coroutines. And I, I again, that's another good topic that we won't have time to get into. 
but in terms of coroutines, that might be a good reason to to embrace Kotlin or at least to evaluate it. Uh, you also have loom looming on the horizon. Uh, so I don't know that pros cons, but you certainly have options. Uh, so let's see here. Um, there we go. Okay, so with regard to Spring Boot, you do have many options. Uh, Groovy, I mean, Groovy is still supported. Uh, it's not necessarily widely used within the Spring Boot ecosystem, but it is still there. Um, Kotlin, of course, is heavily supported. Uh, and Java, well, that's kind of obvious, right? It's a, primarily a Java framework. Uh, and then some, uh, well, we'll say glorious combination of the two, because again, they're very interoperable. So you can have uh, Kotlin and Java or even Groovy mixed in uh, to the same application. So you can, you can go crazy if you want to. Typically, people don't. Uh, they use Java with Spring Boot or Kotlin with Spring Boot or maybe even Groovy. Uh, but certainly, they don't typically mix and match. It doesn't stop you from doing so. OK, uh, getting back to the, to the pros and cons here is the facts. And this is in terms of the Spring Boot um, as well as Kotlin itself or Java. Uh, so some facts, Kotlin moved much faster for years in terms of its development cycle and new features. Uh, not so much the case anymore because Java innovation has accelerated. Uh, that said, Kotlin hasn't, hasn't stopped, hasn't slowed down. So that continues to move apace as well. There's a lot of cross-pollination and inspiration, which is good, right? We want our tools to grow better, uh, you know, steel sharpened steel and all that stuff. Uh, so we want them to, to accelerate the pace of innovation and get better and take inspiration from each other. And they do. They generally do. Uh, Spring Framework, Spring Data, Reactor all have nullability and platform type annotations, uh, which gives you a lot of, of capability in terms of, of making your code or verifying your code to be creating code to be non-nullable uh, non or null safe, uh, which is huge when you're dealing, let's say, with a Kotlin app with Spring Boot. Uh, you have several extension functions defined for very nice DSLs in uh, in Kotlin via uh, the Spring various Spring components and libraries. Um, that said, and I'll get into this as well, the Spring team does an amazing job in creating very good APIs, very very good APIs for Java as well. So we'll see, kind of, we'll do some compare and contrast with that. Uh, there is great initializer support for app creation and for app updating uh, for Java and Kotlin both. So you know that's. Again, that's a fact. They're they're out there. They're easily supported and worked with uh, from the initialization of the application all the way through. Some opinions. Uh, Kotlin no longer feels like a language from a different century, from a newer century, uh, because Java has accelerated the pace of innovation. Uh, doesn't mean, again, that, that's not taking anything away from Kotlin. It just seemed like the, the difference was quite stark for a long time. And it's it's not so stark anymore, because Java is doing some really cool things as well, which, again, is a net positive. Um, so Kotlin still leads in some areas, like I said, likely always will, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, co uh, compiler performance is more equivalent. That also is a good thing because everybody's getting better. So that's that's nice. Um, so let's see. Oh, yeah, let's code. So let's go ahead and get into the code. Let's see how much time I have. Um, wow, let's see. So that's I went three minutes longer than I wanted to, so we're going to have to to be pretty uh, pretty concise with our, our work here. So I'm gonna start off with a, the Spring Initializer to create a couple of projects. Um, I Well, let's just get into it. <laughs> Why not? I'm going to try to keep things as consistent as possible. So I'm going to be using uh, Gradle for the build system because you can use Gradle, for, well, you can use Maven for both as well, but I wanna show you some things uh, with regard to Gradle for Java versus Kotlin applications. So we'll, we'll use Gradle. Uh, so I'm going to use the current version of Spring Boot. I'm just going to change this to uh, the hecklers for the group, and we'll call this, um, uh, let's see, um, DevOps Java Boot. Why not? All right, we use uh, JAR packaging. We'll stay with Java 11 for now uh, for a particular reason. Um, I, I'll get into that momentarily as well, but we'll just stay with that for now. Uh, I'm going to bring in a few, um, a few different dependencies here. So let's see, we've got uh, Reactive Web I want to bring in. And let's see, what else? Oh, I want to bring in Mongo because what I'm trying to do is come up and I'll do reactive Mongo and embedded Mongo because we want to just uh, just bring it all in and, and do some things. I want to give a the, the simplest, leanest, most streamlined example that I can while still encompassing several of the features and capabilities you would use in a typical microservice deploy, right? So I've tried to distill this to the maximum extent possible and this is what I came up with. So I'm going to generate this application 
just drop this on my desktop. And then I'm going to do the same thing using Kotlin and Gradle, current version of boot. We'll change this to DevOps Kotlin boot, Kotlin boot. And we won't need Lombok. We're just going to remove that. I probably won't have much time to get into Lombok at all, although that would be another fun discussion. But hopefully, I'll at least get a chance to mention it, maybe do a couple little things with it. So I'm going to open this up. Uh, let's see. So bring that over. There we go. Ah, too many monitors. OK, so I'm going to open this. And I found that, interestingly enough, I have this going to Yes, Codium uh, or code. I want to do other. I need to get this set up, I guess. So I need IntelliJ. There we go. I'm going to use IntelliJ. And then I'm going to go ahead, just in the interest of time, and I'm going to unzip this application, this package, and we'll open that up as well. That I can, that actually has the. Uh, there we go. OK, so here's my Kotlin boot application. And I'm going to go ahead and close that. And then let me grab this. For some reason, the multiple uh, multiple monitors doesn't always work as well as I would like. But it works. It's good enough. All right, the first thing we're going to do is go to our build.gradle file. Well, if it ever opens. So let's try this one, build.gradle. Okay, so let's try that again. Yay, there it is. Okay, <laughs> so I want to do a couple of things here. This is, uh, since we're using Java, this is using Groovy Script to create this file. I'm going to open the same thing up on the other side here for the Kotlin application. Uh, if it ever finishes, come on, Gradle Demon. There we go. There it is. Okay, so you notice this is a build.gradle.kts. So it's a Kotlin script file. Not a lot of difference. You, you see we have a few more dependencies that we're bringing in because they're Kotlin dependencies, right? So we have Kotlin Reflect, Kotlin Standard Lib, Kotlin X coroutines. We won't have any time to do anything with coroutines today, but again, that's brought in when you're using Reactor by default uh, for the, by the Spring Boot starter. Everything else looks very similar. I don't want to go into specifics of Kotlin features, uh, Necessarily, I might mention some in passing, but if you're not familiar with Kotlin, this is not necessarily a Kotlin primer. It's more of a Kotlin versus Java with boot. So we'll, we'll stay pretty tight on track, hopefully. I do want to and need to change this over uh, because I'm using embedded Mongo. So Flapdoodle, it's one of my favorite, uh, favorite uh, names, actually. I'm just going to bring this in so we can use it not just for testing, but actually in a full-on implementation. Don't do this in production, please. It's just for a demo. Uh, so I'm going to just change this to implementation. We'll just move that up and we'll rebuild this. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is open my application properties. Now, what I want to do is run this on server port, since we're going to be running two of these, 8080. Uh, now, that's the default, so I don't necessarily need to do that, but I just wanted to you know, make sure that we covered that. And then if I go to our Kotlin code, we'll go to our application properties. We'll run this on... 9090, so that way we have two different apps running on two different ports and no port conflicts. So this looks very similar. So let's get started. I actually have a data feeder application. Uh, anytime you do some kind of a demo, you need some kind of context, right? Some kind of a domain. And my domain, as you might imagine, uh, being a pilot in my you know copious spare time, uh, is to, to have something aviation related. So what I wanted to do is define um, a couple of things here, uh, an airport class and a METAR class. Now, you're probably asking, what is a METAR? That is a meteorological aerodrome report. So this is weather. This is the current weather report. I have a data feed that will actually provide that from a public feed. Uh, so this is kind of an ugly, um, ugly structure, but it does work. Uh, so let's see. We have private string, and we have flight rules. And that tells you if by flight rules, and again, I'm staying with the formatting of the data feed itself. Uh, so the flight rules themselves are visual flight rules or instrument flight rules and things like that, marginal visual flight rules, uh, which tells you what you need to do in order to be able to legally and safely fly uh, in those conditions. And then we have the raw, uh, actual raw report itself. So you get all of the things like the temperature and dew point and barometric pressure and things like that, time of observation. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill out a few things here, create a NORGS constructor, create an all arcs constructor here, 
And of course, we have Lombok on our class path. We'll probably get to that here momentarily. But I want to go ahead and just do this the hard way, if you will. Uh, the first time, I, the hard way, right? We have an IDE that generates it. That's crazy. But all right, so I'm going to go ahead and create my equals and hash code methods. And then also the two string method. So we get quite a bit of ceremony here, right? And this is just kind of to be expected, such as it is. OK, so a constructor uh, for the airport. Actually, I got a little ahead of myself there. So we'll go back. Uh, so we want to have a couple things for our airport. We want to have an ID, and we want to have our airport name. Now, uh, here, once again, we'll do a NORG constructor and a, an ARGS constructor. And then we want to do our equals equals and hash oh should do getters and setters shouldn't i getter did i do that on the other one i do that on meters if not we probably should do that otherwise we'll have some issues oh uh, yes we did yeah we did so we're good name okay and then we'll do our equals and hash code so that's good and then we also want to do our two string or need to do our two string Okay, so we're all set, except we need to be able to persist some things. I want to save our airports as documents. We're using Mongo after all, and this will be our ID field. That's good. All right, so now we want to create our interface for spring data. So we want to store things of type airport, right? So this will be our airport repository, and we're going to extend our reactive CRUD repository. Again, storing things of type airport with IDs of type string. And there we go. Now let's do this in Kotlin, right? So, so this is really tough and involved in Kotlin. We're going to, again, store things as a document, if I can type. And we want to create a data class, right? So this is our data class. We'll call it airport. With Kotlin, you can define your, your uh, member variables, if you will, your properties uh, in your constructor and in your class header here. So we're going to do exactly that. This will be a val, uh, which means we can't modify it. So this is our ID. It's of type string. And we once again also have a val of name of type string. So that's fine. And we also, of course, in this case, need to annotate this as our ID, our ID. OK, so there's our airport. And then we also have a data class for METAR. Uh, once again, here we have val, which is flight rules, flight rules string and also raw the raw feed itself which is a string so a little little different right there oh of course ha huh. okay so it's a little different but we can we can get there from here this is something we can work with we're going to define our interface here once again our airport repository we're going to extend our reactive cred repository uh, and we're going to store things of type airport and IDs of type string. I uh, don't need the curly braces. And of course, this is how we short, shorten extends in Kotlin. So that's pretty nice. All right. Now, um, again, owing to time, what I normally would like to do, well, I, I, actually, we need, need to define our service interface. So let's start with that. We'll do the Java side first. Uh, so we want to have a service here. Uh, and this will be our uh, airport, airport info service. And we'll want to inject our airport repository, right? So we can uh, access our data. Uh, and of course, we do also want to interoperate with our external service. So what I want to do here is uh, create a bean here. We'll create a bean and we'll create a web client, a reactive web client. And we want to return web client.create. Right, and we want to point this to our service that's running http colon slash slash localhost 9876 slash metar. So we can grab our metars, not so bad. So we want to inject that web client. We'll call this our wx client for our weather client, and then of course, we want to add the constructor parameters. Oops, also forgot that. There we go, and we're off and running. So we want to be able to provide this to our um, to our controller. And of course, we could define a REST controller here. But again, in the interest of time, what I'm going to do is skip ahead just a little bit. Because 
I think most people have seen a REST controller and REST controllers look very much the same between Java and Kotlin. Uh, if you haven't, again, let's talk about this offline. Happy to discuss this. Uh, if I am skipping over things, it's not to uh, necessarily, um, I, I wanna keep things clear. It's just a matter of a, a restriction of time. And what this allows me to do next is show the uh, functional routing. So that's kind of nice. I do want to leave this here and we'll go ahead and we'll create the same type of thing on this side, on the Kotlin side. And that way we can come back to this uh, from our, uh, from our um, re uh, functional routing from our Kotlin side as well. Okay, so we create our service. Once again, our airport info service. And we will need to inject the same two things, right? So we have our, um, private, we don't want to expose this to the outside, uh, to outside of our class because we're just using it internally, uh, our repo here. So repo airport repository. And then we also want to inject something else, which once again, we need to create. We want to create our bean, uh, bean, and this is a web client. And we're going to create a function. This is how you create a function in Kotlin. And we'll call this client. And of course, you can do a direct assignment if it's a single uh, single uh, operation you do that you can assign this directly. You don't have to do the, the curly braces and all of that. So we'll just do a web client create. No semicolons required. I catch myself doing that all the time. See, it tells you, look, that's not needed. Uh, so once again, we'll go HTTP colon slash slash local host 9876 slash metar. And then we'll use that. We'll inject that here. Uh, and that will be, actually, I'll just keep it on the same line. So that will be our um, private, I'm not going to be able to, it's just too long. The text is too large. So uh, WX client, and that is our uh, web client. Brilliant. Now, our API. Uh, at this point, we need to back up because in order to do our functional routing, we need to have a router function, right? Kind of makes sense. So let's go ahead up here and create another bean at bean and we'll call this router function and we want to return a server response here right a router function of type server response so we'll call this uh, method or this you know, method and thinking and make sure i'm in java here uh, our router function so let's create our router function so we want to do a um, return router functions dot route. So we're going to define a route here. <coughs> and our route will start with a request predicate of, oops, let's see, request predicates dot get. Now, this is already getting a little bit long, all right? So let me go ahead and extend this to where we can see the whole thing, and we'll come back and open up the Kotlin site again. So we're going to point this to slash so we can get the, um, uh, the first just root uh, amount or root uh, returns, which actually brings up something else I'll have to come back to momentarily, is we need some data in there. But we're going to just go to, uh, in this case, 8080 and just return something. So what we want to do in each case is provide a new handler function. Now, this is quite ugly, right? But all we really need is this. We don't need all the rest of this ceremony. We can actually just grab this handler method. We're going to override that. And we're going to provide a handler that we can use in another way. We're going to provide that via our airport information service. So let's get started with that. We're just going to follow this template here. We're going to return a mono of server response. We're going to call this get all airports. And we're going to have a parameter of request. So how will we do this? Well, let's start off with uh, returning a server response dot okay. And we'll provide the body. The body will use our repo to do a find all. Pretty simple. Now we need to specify what kind of body this is and it's a body of type airport. So we're gonna return entities of type airport, I guess I should say. Let's go ahead, since we're in the neighborhood now, let's go ahead and build this out. And we want to return, and this is a mono. So I, I mentioned this kind of very briefly in passing, but when you have a reactive stream, uh, you can think of it, and this is very, very overly generalized, but a mono is zero or one value. So it's like that object of type T, you either get one or you don't. Uh, and then if you have a flux, for instance, if this were to be a flux, which we're not going to do that, uh, but if this were to be a flux, what this returns is some stream of values, zero to n values, as they come in, as they become available. 
Uh, so we'll keep this pretty simple today. So we're just going to retrieve get airport by ID. Again, we'll have our server request coming in. Instead of doing a find all, we'll do a find by ID. And we'll use our request to grab our path, path variable, request dot path variable and ID, and there we go. Now, we also want to access, uh, as I mentioned, we want to access the weather. We want to get that weather for a particular airport. So get weather, all right. And here's a request. Instead of doing a repo.findall, we're actually going to use our client, our WX client, our weather client, to get something, right? We will actually, I need to put, uh, add on a URI. Uh, because what I want to do is provide the location equals, and then we'll add a request.path variable because we're going to specify the ID of the airport. And instead of returning an airport, we're going to return a METAR or a meteorological aerodrome report. So we have our API built. Everything looks good there. So let's go ahead up here and we'll plug this in. So we're going to, uh, we need to provide our airport information service here as a parameter. So, uh, so airport information service service we'll just shorten this to svc just to make it easier service and we'll get all airports oh that doesn't look too bad and we'll do another route so request predicates dot get slash we we'll use the id and we'll use service to get airports by id and let's just duplicate that to make it easier and we'll use slash METAR to grab the METAR. So get weather, there we go. Okay, we can simplify this, right? So we can do some uh, some on-demand static imports. So that shortens this and that. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad, right? So that's, that's looking pretty clean. Let's go back here. So now we can do the same thing in Kotlin. Um, you know, more or less, we need to build out our API. So once again, our airport information service, in this case, we have what? We have a fun, and we'll call this get all airports equals. How am I doing on time? Ah, we're good. We're good. This is so good. All right. So we're going to do a server response dot OK. Now, again, I'm going to just use the on-demand static imports here. So we'll shorten that to, and we'll use body. We'll take our repo and we'll do a find all. Now with Kotlin, we can use a reified type here. So we can return the body of type airport. And oh, it's so clean. It's it's a one-liner. That's really nice, right? So I'm going to do the same thing here. So get airport by ID. And actually, uh, what we're also going to be doing is we're, we'll receive, of course, a server request which is a parameter by default. So again, rack server request, that works, equals okay, dot body. Actually, let's just go ahead and bring this down. That way we can see this a little better. Dot body. Oh, here's the body already. And of course, this is also a type airport. And we'll use repo.find by ID, we use our request <clears throat> dot path variable ID. So that looks good. Now, just to, again, move things along a little more quickly, I'm going to copy paste and then we'll edit this. We don't want to get the airport by ID. Again, we want to get the weather, weather. And instead of returning a body of type airport, we're going to return a body of type METAR. And instead of doing this, we're just going to do our WX client dot get, right? Dot URI. Uh, in this case, it's a little, little different. So loc equals, and we can do this. So dollar sign because Kotlin has string templates. So we can do our request dot path variable, variable. There we go. And that looks pretty good. Uh, let's see. So that's our body. Yep. We'll retrieve that, and actually, that's pretty much it. So there, that looks pretty good. And then formatting just uh, breaks that out a little bit to make it a little more readable. But it all works. So now we need to go up here and create our bean here. 
at bean and our router function, right? So fun router router function function equals, and we have a router DSL. We also have a co-router DSL for, for coroutines based uh, routing, which is really nice as well. Again, no time to get into that today, sadly. So uh, we're going to accept, uh, and we're going to accept our media type of application JSON, which again, we can just shorten this a bit. Uh, and we're going to nest some, some, um, some endpoints here. So we're going to do a get, and we'll point to a pattern slash. Uh, let's see. So that looks looks pretty good. And then we want to uh, let's see. So what I want to do is point to my airport information service, and I want to import that. So um, service airport information service service airport all airports and then we'll just blow this out add this in to id add this into metar id oh typing is going downhill quickly all right so service get weather service get airport by id Et voila. Okay, so let's go ahead and restart these or start these for the first time. And we'll see what I might have missed. Oh, I know what I might have missed. I missed the data. We need to actually provide some sample data. So let's do that very quickly. Uh, so I'm going to create a bean here. We'll call this our command line runner bean. And this just runs upon startup. Uh, so we're going to do a load data and return args. IntelliJ is having a little... Trouble keeping up here, args, and there's our lambda. So let's go ahead and do a, uh, we need to inject our repo, right? So airport repository, so we can use our repo. And we'll use our repo to do a delete all, to go ahead and clean up anything that might still be lingering out there in the database. And then we'll do a then many to take our, our next flux, our next uh, publisher of data. And then we will, uh, do a um, flux.just of these values. So uh, we want to do a new airport. And I have some really good airport names here that I think are absolutely just clever as can be. I need to, to see if I can find them. There we go. Okay. So like uh, K-L-O-L, right? That's a good one. Uh, that's Derby Field. Derby, I'm just going to expand this. There we go, field, and now we do a new airport, and we want to KGAG, right, KGAG, and that's gauge field or gauge airport. These are actual real, by the way. I didn't, I didn't make these up, so gauge airport, and let's see. So let's go ahead and do a few more of these, and then, of course, we one of my favorites is KBOM. So that's uh, Butler Memorial Airport. And then we have St. Louis Lambert International. Of course, we'll go with some legit ones here. So, I mean, they're all legit, but of course, uh, and this would be uh, O'Hare International. Okay, that's sufficient, I think, for our purposes. And then of course, Got my commas there. And there we go. And there's the then many. And what we want to do at this point, uh, we want to do a, a flat map of each of these. We'll save them to our repo. And then we'll subscribe to go ahead and, and make sure everything works. All right. Now, let me bring this back over. In order to save some time, once again, I'm going to take this and copy this. And this generally works, mostly works in IntelliJ because, again, the same folks create IntelliJ as, as have developed Kotlin. So it allows you to convert Java to Kotlin. And again, mostly works. So, I mean, it's, it's not always the prettiest, but it can be made a lot prettier. So we'll just do uh, equals here. And, and then we can get rid of that. Oops. Get rid of that. And... That looks pretty good, I think, except we can clean this up to just do a 
repo save of it because the default parameter for a single parameter lambda is just it. So there we go. Make sure that all looks good. Let me actually expand that. Um, nope, that didn't. Uh... There we go. That looks better. That looks a lot happier, I think. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this, and we'll see what we have. So we'll pull up our window here, and I'm going to go to 8080, and we'll see if we get our airport listing. There they are. Okay, so that's good. Had me worried there for a second. Now, if we do KLOL, we'll make sure we get Derby Field, and that works. Uh, so let's see if we have a METAR for it, and we'll see if our external API works. Oh, it doesn't work. So maybe I did something wrong here. Let's go back and double check. Well, almost certainly I did something wrong here. Uh, certain not null. Oh, because I didn't include, if there isn't one present, uh, I didn't include what to do about that. So let's see here. So we go here to the URI. Um, expand this. There's our body. Here we, oh, huh, retrieve. And then what I actually do want to do is do a, um, let's see. Yeah, that looks right. Okay, let's try that. And then let me go back to my Kotlin side and see if I did the same same thing over here. No, I have a retrieve over here. Everything's fine, uh, except top-level declaration. So let's go back here because I obviously didn't pair my... Oh, yes. Yeah, that's... Uh, I have one too many here. That looks happier. Oh, yes. Okay. So this is what happens when you go fast and you have too little screen real estate. But it all works, I think, or should work eventually. So did I restart? I don't think I restarted. Let's restart this side. Okay. So in the meantime, let's go and check our Kotlin side. I'm just going to pull up a different, there we go, HTTP 9090. Have our airports. Uh, let's get uh, KLOL. That works. And we'll get the METAR for KLOL. Ah. I did the same thing, apparently. So let's see. Hmm. Well, that's awkward. All right. So there's something that I'm missing. And... Let me see if I'm missing it in the Java site as well. Let me try something else, KSTL. Yeah, same thing, okay, so we are missing something here. So clearly I have uh, an error in my code. This never happens. This is proof that it's live, right? So let me go ahead and pull up something that I had used before and we'll see what we've got here. Because clearly I have have typoed something and, and it's not a serious enough typo to, uh, oh, of course, I didn't convert that to a mono. Ah, of course. So coming back, you have to convert this to a mono. Uh, in this case, uh, metar and then metar class. That looks a lot happier, but a lot, a, a little more cumbersome, right? Because what we need to do is convert this to a body, uh, this body coming back from our request to a type of METAR. Uh, and then of course, when we, and that's coming back from our external API and then returning this as a, as a METAR to what the request is. So we'll, we'll do that. We'll go ahead and start that again. Can't believe I missed that. Ah, oh. all right. So we'll go to the Kotlin side and see what I missed on this side. Well, same thing here. So body to mono. And of course, we can do this with a METAR. There we go. Okay, so that should work a little bit better. Oh, and I forgot the uh, in print. See, now I'm just making silly mistakes because I'm trying to hurry and get this wrapped up. 
on a high note, no less. Okay, so let's try this once this restarts. We'll make sure we get the METAR. <clears throat> we still have five minutes. That's tons of time. I do want to show a couple more things, though, that are particularly insightful, I think. Okay, we're getting our METAR. It's visual flight rules for KSTL, uh, time, the winds, uh, out of 300 on the compass, at three knots, uh, 10 statute miles visibility, a few clouds at 8,500 feet, broken clouds at 11,000, so on and so forth. So we're all good there. Let's make sure we can do the same thing on Kotlin, uh, KSTL. And there we have it. Okay, so everything works. Let's go back and see if we can do some other last minute tweaks to this. Because this does still look fairly lopsided in some ways, right? Even though we've cleaned this up a lot and this looks very similar, we do still have some things, uh, a little bit of a mess down here, not on the Kotlin side, but on the Java side. So this is where I think it gets a little more interesting. I'm going to uh, just, there are a couple ways to approach this. I wanna do both. Uh, so in the interest of time, I'll, I'll kind of short circuit a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to change this to Java 16. Uh, if you go to Java 17, Gradle has some issues with it um, here, but uh, we'll use 16. That gets the job done. Uh, so for our METAR, right? I actually just want to um, I want to change this out. Actually, let's just do this. Let's go here and get rid of all of this stuff. So we'll get rid of our airport and METAR. We're going to use records, right? Oh, I didn't. I didn't do that. So I need to go here and refresh. You may be able to see where this is going at this point. So record. Record. There we go. Airport. And we have, uh, I want to make sure I do this the Kotlin way because it's it, it kind of catches me at times. So ID, uh, ID string, right? And, uh, oh, <laughs> I just did. I did exactly what I said I was trying to avoid. Okay, so then string and name for our airport. And there's our first record, uh, except we need to make this a document. So let's do this again, record. Uh, and this time we'll do our METAR. And this will be a string of flight rules. Again, don't hate me. This is the way it's coming in from the data. And then string raw. Now. Again, in the interest of time, this is sufficient to get us up and running. Uh, and this looks very similar, right? Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, we know this will work. Again, things always work perfectly in demos. I'm also going to clean this up just a little bit because we have these, uh, these uh, constructor injected parameters here or constructor injection injections. Uh, we're going to just use Lombok to make this an all our constructor to get rid of those. So then let's go ahead. No, I can't rerun this here because I um, actually don't have uh, JDK 16 wired up here at that point. So desktop, DevOps, Java, and we'll do our dot slash Gradle W boot run. And we'll just uh, set down. We're still running on Kotlin, so that's cool. So we're executing. Okay, so we're compiling. Boot run. That's good. Yep. All good. So let's uh, let's do this. HTTP pi eighty eighty. Make sure everything still works in Java as well. Slash k gag. <laughs> and then oh, metar k gag. Look at that. Okay, so everything works. Now, I think the, the key bit to go back to is, and look at is the code, right? So so look at the code with, with Java 16 records. This looks very much the same. Uh, and you see some minor differences here when you get into some of the other, uh, some of the other things, like you have the Kotlin funds, uh, you have the direct assignment of, of functionality when it's a single statement, uh, and that's cool. Um, so, uh, you, you can go on here and you see, again, this is very similar. It's uh, a little more Kotlin-esque. You know, it's it's um, uh, more idiomatic Kotlin, but it's very similar in terms of the uh, the DSL, the routing DSL, both in Java and function. I think that's a really, really good 
a testament to how hard the Spring team works to make uh, APIs super usable and useful in both languages. So that's kind of nice. Uh, let me go back to the slides and wrap up because we're really close on time and I don't want to um, don't want to miss out. So. So some thoughts. The syntax is very, very similar in most cases, in most spring cases. Again, I'm not talking at this point in, in Kotlin versus Java because obviously the syntax is similar but enough different to, to throw you if you're not thinking along those lines. However, um, within the spring cases, the, the team works very hard to make the APIs uh, very fluent and fluid and easy to use for a developer. So uh, the, the areas you think Kotlin would shine the most in terms of the ability to use extension functions and create DSLs, uh, actually it does shine, uh, but the Spring team works hard to make uh, the Java equivalent very use usable as well. Compiler, compiler performance is now basically equivalent between the two. Uh, there are Spring code examples throughout the Spring projects in both Java and Kotlin, so that's not really a barrier. Uh, the actual Spring code is Java, except for a few key Kotlin DSL extension uh, functions. Uh, but if you're looking to be as <laughs> kind of silly to think about it this way, I guess, in some ways, but if you're looking to be as close to the metal as possible, uh, as close to the framework and, and project code like Spring Data and Reactor and what have you, uh, you're going to probably want to use Java. But again, that's not really much of, a, of, of an impedance mismatch. In fact, it's zero impedance mismatch because the two work together and interoperate so well together, Kotlin and Java. Uh, the, I guess another side of that, though, is do you or do you want to use Kotlin elsewhere? Do you have mobile apps using Kotlin? Do you uh, use Kotlin to build uh, for Kotlin JS? Are you looking at uh, Kotlin native or doing something with Kotlin native? Uh, or do you just want to use Kotlin because it is a very elegant language? Uh, and if so, there's no real, there's no nothing really holding you back uh, because Kotlin is an excellent language with excellent support uh, in Spring in the Spring ecosystem. So. With that, let me leave you with some resources. All the code you saw here today and more, uh, because I'll be evolving this over time, is at my repo, Give Kotlin the Boot. Uh, if you want to know more about Kotlin itself, kotlinlang.org is the place to go. The Spring uh, Spring Boot uh, documentation, or, or I guess projects launching off-site or leaping off-site is right there. Uh, and of course, you can go to the documentation, uh, learning like bite-sized guides, the API documentation, et cetera, uh, as well as it can take you straight to GitHub for the actual code behind Spring Boot itself. If you want to reach out to me, here are my email addresses, my Twitter account. And by all means, if you're, vir if you're virtually at uh, DevOps, check out the virtual Microsoft booth. If you're there on site, check out the Microsoft boot, uh, booth, uh, <laughs> 40 and slip there, Microsoft booth there on premises. So with that, thanks so much for coming and have a great, great DevOps UK. Hope to see you there in person next year.